In this presentation, we will generate, analyze, print, and export to Excel a sales by item report within QuickBooks Pro 2019. For more accounting information and accounting courses, visit our website at accountinginstruction.info. Here we are on the home page. We currently have the open windows open. In order to open the open windows, you want to go to the view drop down and select the open windows list. We're going to go to a report up top. We're going to looking for the sales by item summary. We can find that by going to the reports and dropping down to the sales item and looking for the sales by item. I, however, like to look through the report center when looking for more of these detailed reports. Remember that these reports will be supporting the major financial statements, those being the profit and loss and the balance sheet. In this case, focusing in on the profit and loss. We're focusing in on sales, sales by a particular section, sales by item. We're currently in the standard tab. We're going to go to the sales item. I like to be able to, to sort through these by having the uh, grid view or e maybe even this uh, view here which will give us the uh, reports and give us a little bit more detail so we can just look through if we're trying to look through what we want in terms of sales how can we break out the sales numbers and we can just we can list through these reports sales by customer gives us more more of a an image for us to see how we can uh, sort this da data pending sales we got the sales graph we've got the sales by item summary and that's the one we want so we want the sales by item we can have this in, as compared to the sales by item detail. And I'm just scrolling through with the mouse, by the way. And, but this is the one I'm, I'm looking for. So this is the format that will give us the best visual. And, and again, if we're looking for kind of how can I sort this data and present it in different ways. I want to sort the sales items in different ways and look for the report that best suits my needs. This is a good view to have. Of course, we can modify the reports a lot once we get the one we want to start with. And so this is one we're going to have here. We're going to say run that report. And then we're just going to change the dates to the dates we will be working on, which is going to be 010119 to 022819. That's January 1st, 2019 to February 28th, 2019. Now this report can look a little bit confusing because first we need to know, well, what is an item? What do we talk? Sales by item? What's an item? And we, we looked a little bit before what items are, but until we start to make items, they don't really make sense. It's going to be a QuickBook term that means the, the either an inventory item or a sales item. So in other words, it's kind of what we do. We either sell inventory, in which case the items mean inventory items like a guitar, the Epiphone Les Paul, the Epiphone Standard Pro, the Gibson SG, the, St the Steinberger Solid Body, the Gibson USA. Those are types of guitars, types of inventory that we will be selling. We'll set up those items so we'll get a better idea of what they are in future presentations. And then service items. We have guitar lessons. We have diagnostics on the, on the guitar. And then we've got hourly service. We've got uh, other guitar lessons. So these are these would be the types of items in terms of how we're going to group things. And these and you can think of the items in this case, things that you would put on an invoice. <laughs> They're going to be the groupings of stuff that we would have basically on the invoice. And they'll give a little bit more detail than we would see on the on the sales. Uh, in terms of just accounts but it's going to tie to the income statement so if we go to the totals here uh, we've got the total amount tying out to 18,775.40 if we go to a profit and loss and say okay does that tie out to the profit and loss let's see we'll go to the reports we'll go to the companies and financial and select the profit and loss report and we're going to select the same date range which is 010119 to 022819 and that's going to give us now we have 19,275 and as we've seen in the past the difference I won't I'll just say is 19275.4 this is our income broken out not by item but just by account this we either sell inventory all the inventory groups together or services pretty much all grouped together we broke them out in two different services two different account services and if we go here back to the open windows uh, sales item summary now it's broken out by more detail these are these are still merchandising sales but now they're, they're broken out by what we actually sold so that's the more detail these are service items but it's broken out but by the item the actual item of service that we had not just grouping all in the service 
And so that's why uh, we need to understand this. So when we set up the accounts, we realize that we don't need all the detail. I'm going back to the profit and loss in the profit and loss. We don't need to, for example, have a separate income account that says, this is this type of guitar we sold. This is this type of guitar. This is this type of revenue. This is this type of, of service we did, this type of service. We may break them out as we did here if it's significant. However, uh, we can have other reports that will break out the more detail and therefore just have more of a summary basis on the income statement. So back to the sales by Adam Summary in the open windows. Now we were off uh, by, I believe it's going to be that 500, 18775.4, 500. And again, that's going to be that adjusting entry that we did. We'll talk about that when we do adjusting entries and how that could uh, throw things off and how to, you know, we want to be careful with those when we enter those. So this is going to be, in other words, supporting documentation for a number on the profit and loss report. Now it's nice that it gives us this kind of breakout. This is going to be percentage of sales. So the percentage of sales is just taking the dollar amount here of 1500 divided by the total of uh, this is going to be the of the 18775.4. So that's going to be one five. So not time, not this total, but this total down here. And if you move the decimal places two point, that's eight percent. So that's going to give us a percentage of the total here. The average price is going to give us yeah, the average price. We'll talk about the cost of goods sold for, and this is only applicable to inventory items because the inventory items have a, a cost that we purchased them for and the price that we sell them for. And then it's going to give us the average cost of goods sold, the gross uh, margin, which is going to be the, the sales price over the cost of goods sold and the gross margin percent, that difference uh, in a percentage basis, meaning the gross margin divided by the sales. So we, we won't get into too much depth into this kind of stuff right now because we haven't really set up uh, the sales items yet. So this stuff might be a little bit abstract right now we will set up inventory items and we'll talk more about how, how they behave within the quickbooks systems as we set this stuff up but in essence this report's obviously going to be useful if we sell inventory or if we do not whether we have service or inventory breaking this information out by the items that we have let's now do some of our standard formatting removing these items removing the pennies so we're going to go to the customized reports up top we're going to go to the header and footer and we're going to remove the date time report basis we'll put our some type of name <laughs> into the footer column here in the footer section and then we'll go to the fonts and numbers and let's say that we want parentheses let's remove the sense and let's make them red and so that's mostly our our changes we'll go ahead and say okay and it looks a little bit neater here. Now we'll go ahead and export this to Excel and save it as a PDF. Just work on grouping our information and our files by going to the Excel dropdown. We're going to create a new worksheet, but we will be putting it into an existing workbook, which we had created in a prior presentation. So we're going to go to the Browse tab, select the dropdown. We want to be on the desktop. Mine is at least a Get Great Guitars <laughs> reports. We're going to go into section four and we're just going to double click on this item to open it and export this or put this information to it. Then we'll export. Here is the report. I'm going to go ahead and left click on it and drag it to the right. So it's in order as uh, we put this information into the system. Then we'll typically go to the view tab up top and we'll go to the windows group. We'll unsplit the panes. And then we'll check in the page layout to see if the header is there. Looks like the header is there. Then we'll go back to the uh, normal. Now notice it's on two pages wide. That's kind of a problem. So we'll have to adjust that. Double click on it. We want to put sales by item. And for the name of the tab. Now this wouldn't be a big problem if we gave the Excel worksheet. But even so we, we would want it to print on one page wide. So the way we start to fix that, whenever we see that, is we go to the page layout. And first thing we'll try to do is go to the page setup and change the orientation to landscape and see if that does it. That doesn't quite do it here. So then I would think, well, are there any columns we don't need? For example, this column only has a total in it. We may not need that. I can right click. So I'm going to I'm going to highlight this whole column by putting our cursor on that drop down. 
then right click on that selected column and delete it. That's one thing we can do. Now all these columns we also don't really need. So I could put my cursor on that 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 column, hold down control, select that column, that column, that oh, that column, that column, that column, that column, let go of control, right click on the selected areas and delete. So those are just a couple things we could try to do to, to shore this up, which is nice. Uh, and then we can click this first tab, right click and delete it, delete the tab. And now we've got our two sheets here. So we could uh, go ahead and give this to someone or print it as a PDF file, print. And then if we use our cute PDF printer, we can print not just one work uh, sheet, but the entire workbook, which would save it to one PDF file rather than two. So that could be useful. So we'll go ahead and exit out of that and save that and ex make it macro free. And now we'll also print it as a PDF by going to the printer. We're not going to save it as a PDF. We could, but I use the printer and that cute PDF printer that we have here because that works every time and we can print this information. This would be the more standard way most people would have this information uh, rather than exporting it to Excel. And we're just going to name this then sales by item summary. But note again, we're getting a lot of reports here. So if we were to, you know, if we had to give all this information to someone, we're going to overwhelm them. We want to make it as easy as possible. We want to at least zip the folder possibly, or maybe put it into Excel or maybe put it into one PDF file rather than five, just a couple options. So we'll save that. And that'll be the sales by item summary report. For more accounting information and accounting courses, visit our website at accountinginstruction.info.